She said, is this how it's going to be, living with you? I said, I don't know. It's cool now you shape up, I suppose. <laughs> Hello, what's the crack? What's the story? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today, we're checking out one of my favorite comedians right now. This is Mickey Flanagan. This is Getting Out The Doghouse. Let's go. And uh, I have to say, I've given my wife a little mention. I know that like she, she gets mentioned in this show a lot. But I cannot reassure you enough that we are very, very much in love. She is as happy as a pig in shit with me. She is. I can show you the Barclay card statements if you really need to see how cheerful it's made her. And which is the first girl who I've sort of met who it's got better and better with because I've had a lot of disasters. Nothing to do with me, obviously. <laughs> and I've had them end for bizarre reasons. Because I've been out of all types of women. I've been out of a girl once, not my normal cup of tea. She was really spaced out, man. She was into numerology and astrology. She believed she was a witch. She had energies flowing through her. She could heal people. Do you know why she blew me out? I got a little bit of spunk on her dream catcher. <laughs> Didn't it? <laughs> and I nearly blew it at my wife right early doors. Do you want to hear the story? I nearly blew it at my wife in the first year. Ooh, nah, it involves the events of 9 11. Strap in, strap in. Now I know 9 11 was a terrible day in human history. Tragic beyond belief. Tragic, tragic, tragic. However, 9-11 did get me out of the doghouse. <laughs> Hear me out! Hear me out! My wife and I met in the year 2000, fairly late in the year. Like I said, we went off on the little Greek holiday. We had a bit of a deal-breaker moment there when I changed into a pair of speedos and a bum bag. <laughs> she said she wobbled. Thank God I'd lost my vest that said posing till closing on it. <laughs> Iron Appa, 1990. Square. We got back and I sat her down. I said, listen, sister, you're my cup of tea. I said, I think we should put this to the test. I think you should move in. She moved in. I was still a very independent man at that stage in my life. Still able to make my own decisions. Still able to buy a pair of shoes without sending her a photograph first. <laughs> That's always a tough moment in the shop, isn't it? The little assistant looks at you. Do you like them, sir? That's so true. Like every time I want to buy something, even for myself, even though because I know my girlfriend, I just, you know, she's so reasonable. Literally, she thinks like I'm. I'm the kind of person that if I want something, I buy it. Like I could be in bed on Amazon. I'm like, oh my god, I want this laptop. I'm buying it. But sometimes it's bare. To be like, oh, sorry, what do you think of this? Then she'd be like, oh, no, don't buy it from there. Buy it from here. It's cheaper. Buy this that. And it's even though I might not agree, but it's she's always right. Always, always right. So listen to your girlfriends or your wives. Listen, when I say wives, I mean, I have one wife, don't have two wives. Whatever you're into, it's up to you. <laughs> I don't know yet. <laughs> That's always a tough moment in the shop, isn't it? The little assistant looks at you. Do you like them, sir? <laughs> I don't know yet. <laughs> I'll let you know in a minute. No. I'm having a crisis, apparently. Nobody wears green cowboy boots anymore. <laughs> sort yourself out. <laughs> Later. I said, you might as well know how my life unfolds, sister, and I'll tell you straight off the top. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, I go and do the stand-up comedy. I said, but Mondays, I go a bit fucking mental, I do. I go proper mental. I said, we have a Monday club, me and the lads. Christ knows how I end up most Mondays. So she said, fair enough, if that's how you live your life. <laughs> I said, but I'll tell you what, seeing as you just moved in this week, I'll be home this Monday with a nice bottle of wine and a takeaway for you. She said, you are the best thing that ever happened to me. I said, oh no, stop crying. <laughs> I went out with every intention of going home, every intention of going home. But then I got the flavour. The dreaded flavour! <laughs> All I had 
had to do was phone him and said, look, I know I'll be home about half seven. I said that, but that's not going to happen, babe. I've got the flavour. I ain't coming home. I'll make it up to you later in the week. And yeah, that would have been job done. But no, no, I didn't do that. Because I'm a man and I'm an arsehole. <laughs> and I'm a coward. So I phoned her. I said, babe, you know, I said I'd be home about half seven. I reckon we're looking nearer half eight. <laughs> she said, all right, but I have got the plates out. And I am hungry. I said, all right, I won't let you down. <laughs> Half eight rolled round and I thought, hmm, <laughs> I ain't going on. <laughs> but I won't phone her an irritator. <laughs> in my head, I reinvented her as the most reasonable woman in the world. <laughs> Sitting there going, oh, Half eight is still not in. He must be having a lovely time. <laughs> Never mind, I'll make myself a sandwich. <laughs> and I'll make him one and all. <laughs> and I'll leave him a little note. You had a lovely time, didn't you? <laughs> but never came on. Here's a sandwich. <laughs> Please feel free to give me a nudge if you fancy a bit of the other. <laughs> That is not what happened. <laughs> At about nine o'clock, my phone went, and the abuse I received was so intense and profound, every other man in the pub could feel it. Men were turning to each other, someone's getting a coat in here, I can feel it. I don't like it. Someone's getting a coat in. Who's him over there? <laughs> I put my phone back in my pocket, I'd gone rather ashen. My mate looked at me, he said, what's the matter with you? I said, she's gone right the other way. <laughs> he went, Mick, Mick, I'm going to tell you something for nothing now. <laughs> you go running on, the rest of your life will be in misery. <laughs> <laughs> All the other divorcees started joining in. <laughs> yeah. Yo, I've learned something. Never take an advice. Do not take any advice from anyone that's single. Do not. Because there's a reason why they're single. Do not take an advice. Please, from your single friends, don't. Don't. I don't care. Sometimes I might be like, oh, are you going home? Oh, you're weak. Like, yes, thank you. I'm whipped. I'm weak. I'm whipped. Thank you. Thanks very much. Because <laughs> there's a reason why. There's a reason why they're single. There's a reason why. Just listen to your girl. Obviously, have fun, you know, go wherever. But you, as a guy, you should know when to do it. Do you know what I mean? You know, you know, you know yourself. Let's get back. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you. I said, I'll make you right. Get another drink in. <laughs> when I'm about one o'clock in the morning, down I fell on the bed, pissed. She said, is this how it's going to be living with you? I said, I don't know. It's called cool, no, a U-shape up, I suppose. <laughs> Only the way you spoke to me tonight was appalling. <laughs> I woke up about seven in the morning. There's some banging and crashing going on outside, if you don't mind me saying. I'm still pissed. I shouted out, keep it down out there. What's the matter with you? Where's your civility? <laughs> the door slammed and she went to work. I woke up about half one. I'm in bits now, and I, oh, I'm over, guilty. I had a little look at the, in the mirror at myself, I had a little look in the mirror. Is this it? You want to fuck this one up and all? <laughs> you want to be on your own the rest of your life? Old man in the park stinking a piss with a little dog. Is that the way you want to be? <laughs> well, you're going the right way about it, ain't you? I gave you right fucking idiot. <laughs> oh, I'm not talking to you anymore. <laughs> I went and put the kettle on in a crisis, made myself a cup of tea. I Slunk down on the settee, I was a broken man. So deep in the doghouse, I may never re-emerge. I flicked the telly on. 9-11's kicked off. I thought, ha-ha, there's hope. <laughs> this will take the edge off of it. This will take the dairy off, as they say. When the second plane went in, I said, Mickey, you're out of jail, son. You are out of jail. the carnage, I called her in work on the phone. I said, hello, bye. Why? You seen what's going on? She said, yeah, we were all watching it on the telly in work. I 
Yeah. <laughs> Puts everything in perspective, though, about it, eh? <laughs> she said, I'm coming home early. Me and you are going to have that bottle of wine and that takeaway. <laughs> I put the phone down. I was back in the game, weren't I? Do you know what? Ah, it's so, I feel like the older you get, the more you just realise how to, how to live your life. Like now sometimes, yeah, if I know my girlfriend is going to come, like if I know she's having a long day and she might come home, she might, you know, she might be tired. What do I do? You know, light, light, light one can do, make sure I've done the dishes. I had to do dishes, but light like can do, make sure I've done dishes, put something that she want to watch on TV. Literally, put it ready. Might bring her some little snack on the table for when she get back home. But like when she gets back home and she sees that, she's like, oh, she's just relaxed, happy. She does what, imagine coming home, dishes everywhere that I've used all day, because I work from home. Dishes that I've used all day, everything there, living room is dirty. Oh, oh, no. So that's a, that's a tip. But she just laugh, laugh, just like one or two. Just the can do alone does the job. I actually hope she's not watching this. If you're watching, I love you. Yeah, like, comment, subscribe if you like that. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.